Hey, welcome to Alpha Book Club. I'm Rachel Hine, and this is our online book club for all of you guys, our Alpha community members. Joining me as always is Hector Navarro. What's up? Oh no. What the hell Sorry. was that? <laughs> what, wait, why? why? Do a, that again. Just a different energy, because no one would ever say that in a book club. So. That doesn't excuse true. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it true doesn't. Too. At all. But no, sincerely though, what's up everybody? What's up? <laughs> and Lon Garrett. <laughs> <Woo! laughs> I funny. like it. Hey, I like yeah. it. And I want more of it. Yeah. Great. Not offensive though, is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh my gosh. Woo. It is gonna be a fun <laughs> one today. I see yeah. everyone in the chat is really exciting. If you're joining yes. us for the first time, we are tackling the gunslinger book one of the Dark Tower series, and whether this is your first time watching the show or if you've been around since our very first book, we want to hear from you. So join us in the chat. Please help us figure out what's going on, mm. dissect all of the beautiful language, If you haven't cry. read it, uh, there's spoilers. There will be spoilers, <laughs> but you can go back and catch up on previous episodes on the VOD on Alpha mm -hmm. as well, so you can go back and do previous books we've done, previous weeks. But for now, yeah. we're going to get into The Gunslinger, because we have so much to talk about. Oh my about. gosh. I don't it's know how we're going to fill this in an hour. That's what people mm. are saying. There's no way to talk about all the tropes and, and concepts of that section in just one hour. But speaking of spoilers, if you guys in the chat, which I bet a lot of you have, have read all of the books in the Dark Tower series and are super familiar with it, no spoilers on that. We're just talking about uh, the first book, The Gunslinger, even up to the section that we're on, because I haven't read the last chapter yet. Yeah. We're going to be discussing that next week. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is my first read through of the Dark Tower series, and it's my first ever Stephen King book that I'm reading. Same, same, same. Which is, really? That's yes. awesome. We, that's so cool. We know it is. Yeah. We, what's that? We did talk <laughs> It's all, what? We, do, we already yeah, had we, this conversation? Yeah. Oh yeah, big yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Oh, cyclical. Whoa, nice time. time. Time is a flat same. circle. That's right. In this book. That's <laughs> right. Yes, it is. <laughs> There's, so, okay. If you're just joining us, basically all you really need to know getting into it is that the gunslinger as the, as the most beautiful first line says, if I can find it, mm -hmm. which I can't. Well, that's the foreword. Wait, I... The men in black <laughs> fled across the desert and the gunslinger followed. So we have this world, they're in the desert, something has happened, something horrible. Different worlds, different times, mm -hmm. different references to modern pop culture. Hey Jude keeps popping hey up. Hey Jude, again. Again and again. again. Um, and so the gunslinger has gone through this town. He's told us a story of how he destroyed this town, how he's been chasing the man in black, and now he is with a young boy. Named Jake. Named Jake. Mm -hmm. Anyone else picturing Jake Lloyd? Stop. Now I am. <laughs> Great, no. thanks. And now, and now, I, don't, and and now it's and I don't care anymore. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so, I'm I don't sorry. know who I was picturing. I don't know. Maybe Jake Lloyd. That's where I was going. Blonde mm -hmm. bowl cut. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like I was maybe picturing um, the young version of Anthony Hopkins in Westworld. A I little was also bit. doing that because I've been watching oh, yeah. Westworld. Yeah, yes, I could yeah. see that. Yeah, yeah. But now I'm picturing uh, Jake Lloyd, and when he gets onto the uh, uh, hand car, he now says, this. "It's working! <laughs> <laughs> it's working!" <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> now this is a hand car. <laughs> That's, right. That's what he says, Mod. Oh, it's the worst. I'm just Single-handedly oh, ruined it for everyone. Oh my gosh! That's amazing. And his tearful goodbye to the, to Roland. He says, "Will I ever see you again?" Oh. It's the worst. Are you an angel? He goes, "No, I'm a gunslinger." Yeah, <laughs> and you will die. Oh, oh boy. my god. Yeah. So I don't know how we come back. <laughs> Can't. I'm sorry. So we're with yeah. No, that's the end of the show. No. Um. So let's get into the chapters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do we start? We, we didn't touch on two so much last time because we had so much to say yeah whoops about that one um but in this particular these chapters like you really do establish and see the relationship forming between the gunslinger and between um jake yes <laughs> i nearly called him luke then luke. good lord do i need to see rogue one asap <laughs> yeah. um and i love the dynamic that they have between each other and there are moments here where the gunslinger just finds himself talking and talking and wanting to share his life story with this boy yes. who doesn't know whether to love him for protecting him and rescuing him or hate him because he's so confident of where his fate lies with this man. Mm -hmm. Knowing that he will die, he's had, he had this like, hunch from almost the get-go, mm -hmm. but knowing that if he doesn't follow him and be with him, then he'll die anyway. Damned if you do, damned if you don't. <sighs> yeah, and he references... Um, Roland thinks of him like Elaine, who is part empath, and so you feel like Jake is also picking up on... There's so much mysticism happening here. Mm -hmm. We know that time is sort of out of place. 
the people can sense, different people can sense things. There's a succubus. Yeah. Which is. Is that the oracle? That sounded the like oracle. there was a lot of chafe somehow. Mm. He said he was very sore. And I was like, oh. Oh, yeah. when he had sex with the succubus? Yeah. That was also an interesting, look, well, this Well, a lot of time went by, apparently. It was <sighs> like hours and hours. Ow. Yeah. Really? Nope. I didn't, I don't remember yeah. reading he that basically It was, was dark like, when he. It's going to hurt for a week. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So what did she do to him? That was a really <laughs> weird um, section. This whole, my take section. on it is that Stephen King is young, and he's like uh, got a, a d a different ideas about men and women. Then he's a horn dog. He's a, thank you. I didn't <laughs> want to put it that way, but yes, that's I have this idea because every female character in this book, the, it's it, like, like Stephen King will be like, and then the gunslinger had sex with this character. <laughs> like, okay, it was an oracle that sure, but why not? Yeah. And at one point, Roland just says like, do what you will with me or have at yeah. me or something yeah. like that. And yeah. I'm like, bro, at no point did she mention that she had to like have sex with you for to to do some sort of prophetic she vision. Was Am I was she hinting at that? In the modern day term, she was gagging for it, I believe the term is. <laughs> um, okay. But she was very, very like, ah, like, like thirsty. She was thirsty. Thirsty! That's the more modern. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thirsty. Yes. Oh, she was thirsty. Goodness, do I not know how to talk about this? Mm -hmm. um, but you know, she, and he, he had to exchange. I know what you want. You were desperate to have it. <laughs> but okay. But then right. we already did. I mean, kind I feel of. like in he earlier did that chapters, with, uh, certainly. Yeah, there mm -hmm. is that exchange. But there's mm -hmm. also, so there's. Do not oh. read the Anita Blake series then, guys. Mm, the vampire thing? Yes. Is it all super sexy? I love, I mean, I love yeah. a good She's sexy. She's a succubus. Oh, I love cool. a sexy book. Marvel Comics made comics of those 100%. too, I think. Yes, they did. Anita Blake, yeah, yeah, they did. She looks yeah. great. Anyway. Mm. Java Book mm. Geek Girl says, I think the Gunslinger mm. saw a lot mm. of his younger love self. Rice, look. All right. <laughs> I, uh, Java Book Geek Girl says, I think the Gunslinger saw a lot of his younger self in Jake mm. slash something akin to his son almost. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do and we know who's playing him in the movie? Is that I don't know. No, I don't. don't. But I think that I think that actor must have been announced, or I think we even saw a picture of him, mm -hmm. like on like a subway car with. It's gonna be with a tough sell for oh. a film yeah. too. Yeah. To yes. get they so they're bonding and and throughout that we have Roland, getting this prophecy from the Oracle, saying which the boy is, will die. Yep. Yeah. You will have to sacrifice him to get to the man in black. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he goes back to camp knowing this, like, yeah. Yeah, and then she, uh, also says that there will be three, this mater mysterious three challenges. There will be someone who is possessed by the demon heroine. Yeah, that's right. And, and he's like, I don't know what this word is. Yeah, yeah. And, and that there will be other worlds and other demons. The second is on wheels, and the third is death, but not for Roland. And apparently we don't find out what that is this book. So mm -hmm. that's annoying, but <laughs> I mean, there are what, seven of these? Yes. So we do, I mean, I'm gonna ha I have to read them all This now. is the show for the next seven months. Yeah. <laughs> Next month, we're <laughs> just gonna do another Dark Tower we, book. I mean, we will. Stephen King, come on down. Yeah, oh man, we could, maybe, maybe. Oh, maybe. Never say never. Yeah. Stephen, if you're listening. I want to go back on Java's point really, really quickly yeah. about the relationship that they're having and saying, seeing a lot of his younger self there. Mm -hmm. I loved the fact that this information about the guns, gunslinger's um, history and growing up and becoming a man was information that was kind of leaked over the time. And it was yes. really important that Jake was like, how do I become a man? Because I, obviously I feel like my days are numbered. Um, yeah. Uh, but getting to know that side of Roland and, and this challenge that he faced where, I want to get this straight, this man is bonking his mum behind his dad's back, yeah? Yes, mm -hmm. the man in black. That's or no, 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 what's the guy's Ma name? Martin. Martin. Martin, okay. So Martin is Martin and his not the man in black? Is there, are they not the same person? No. Okay. I have chocolate on my chin from that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. Um, Wait. And that's how his what? vengeance and revenge and anger is really stemmed from. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he went through his test to be kind of become a gunslinger two years earlier than the age of his father, who was previously the youngest person to take the test, and he actually wins, mm -hmm. is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, there, uh, it feels like there is some sort of kingly blood in his line. Yeah. Well, he's got the uh, blood of a god. There was mm -hmm. a, a king. Yeah, the king. Yeah, of a king. And That's again, so there are all these that I want to get into the timeline later. I want to keep on, but I'm trying to figure out what's happening. That's all. <laughs> it's hard. But yeah, I feel like. So they, Martin is with his mom, and then they kill 
his father, correct? Or is it just that he's been father went away on a hunt. Yeah. That's right. Oh, the mother died, yeah. yeah. Eventually yeah. dies. Yeah. Yes, but, but, but he kills her, doesn't he? Because this is my favorite thing about Stephen King's writing. He will preface a huge event in such a casual way. My yes. favorite was with Jake, and it was like, um, and just before, uh, you know, the man, I, I met the man who was going to kill me, da da da. And you're like, whoa, whoa, what? Whoa, Ooh. this is big, big. And it happened again with the, um, the throwaway line of, oh, you know, and then once I killed my mother, da da da. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. stop, back up. Like, yeah. that's huge. And then it kind of went no, nowhere with that either. I think Jake's response was, I'm tired, I want to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. hmm. But anyway, like, these huge, big, big reveals. Yeah. And then, so it's like, writing is like, Phew. ooh, but how do we get there? Well, this is how we get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is clever to keep me interested. Yeah, and yeah. I think too that while he's telling the story um, to Jake, you see him sort of paralleling his friendship with the hawk and having to sacrifice mm. David, the hawk, a little bit. And it feels like he's priming Jake for what is about to happen. Because even though Jake says and seems to know that this is going to happen, he's still a boy. He's still afraid. He still wants to learn how to become a man. He's still trying to make choices. You see him try to leave and he can't, he doesn't want to leave, oh, he doesn't want to be by oh, himself. Wait, wait, yeah. Heartbreaking scene, I know, yeah. and you're like, don't go with him. That's a, those are great observations, those yeah. are great. To clarify, I was confused because the Man in Black signed a, a note earlier, Walter O'Dim, uh, and when I heard that, when I read the name Martin, I just thought it was Walter. Oh. I'm like, oh, he's the Man in Black, but it's not, it's a different guy, apparently. I don't know, I don't know what's going This guy feels like he's, he's the time traveler. Like, He's obviously realized that Jake has served a purpose in whatever this is by taking him from one of the worlds. The man in black. Killing and, him and, and then and bringing him into this yeah. world. Um, that's what I want to know more about, is the, the man in black's abilities and how he knows which people play integral parts of whatever this timeline is and how he can take one person from one world and bring them into another. Mm -hmm. Like, what is that about? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, in the chat... Um, Nino Ray 23 says there's something really Freudian about that passage with the mom, dad, and Martin. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole, a lot of his, his feelings about women and the fact that he murdered his mom and makes that sense. he's coming across her and her sexually makes me think that there's a lot of. There's something there. He, he, there. When he talks about like the big ball party that him and his friends snuck onto, mm -hmm. uh, onto those premises when they were young. And seeing how his father was there, his mother was there, and the man in, uh, not the man in black, Martin. Martin. Yeah. Uh, and he mentions that he hated his father for basically, like, having her cheat on him. That's but what, also you know. allowing this man, because he said, back then as a child, I was watching this man dance with my mother. And yes. I didn't, I didn't understand the dance. I didn't yes. get the dance. Now, like, being older, mm -hmm. I totally understood every part of that dance. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I knew what that meant. And having the father watching, and then once the dance was over, the mother went to the father's arms with open, open arms, and yeah. everyone's like, it's so obvious that you guys are together, and this is a one big joke. And yeah, yeah, I think in hindsight, he's very embarrassed about it all. Yeah, so a lot of his uh, feelings towards women are, I think, expressed when we meet a female character. And the mm -hmm. fact that the Oracle, he calls her bitch, as somebody said, Nina, yeah. Nino Ray says that, calling her bitch didn't make it better. Uh, so he learns this from the Oracle, and uh, for me, the, a thing that was really devastating was I didn't, I didn't think that Roland was telling Jake his backstory to try to raise him or to try to help him. I thought he was doing it because at one point there's a line that mentions he was doing it to avoid the silence because he knew what was going to happen, Jake knew what was going to happen, and a character who was historically silent himself up to this point in the book, all of a sudden the gunslinger Roland just starts yeah. blabbering about his life. And I think he started doing it to try to distract Jake. And I think a moment where Jake said, was this, that was your mother then? Or like response to something in the story for the first time, I felt like that was a moment where that kid got tricked. The kid is just listening and he's like an attentive listener and he's, and he's trying not to you know, uh, fall for Roland's trick, I guess. And he's a kid and Roland's an adult, so the, the psychology worked out, so the kid responds to that, and then Roland kind of goes from there and they have a little bit of back and forth. But I thought it was strictly because he, mm -hmm. Roland didn't want to think about I don't want to get attached to this kid, so I'm going to just talk a story at him mm. and get him thinking about something else until that way will make it easier for me to, to separate my feelings from him. There was nervous mumblings, but then from that, when yes. Jake was something to the conversation. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, that's when he was like, I need to know more about becoming you know, a man. Exactly. And you know, so please tell me. And he was like, yep. almost like, hey, if this is one thing that I can do right now, it, this is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. I also don't think that he necessarily is conscious of, uh, he's trying to avoid getting close to him, and I think when he's talking to him, he's also not 
realizing how much he's starting to care because exactly. he doesn't strike me as the most self-aware person. Exactly. So I think too that he doesn't realize how much he's enjoying talking because even in the beginning of the book, he's he really wants to tell his story. Mm -hmm. He wants yeah. to tell it to yeah. someone and he finally has the audience for that and he's becoming more connected with him even though he knows what's going to happen and I what like he it. has to yeah. do. The gunslinger uses silence to promote a story and then Jake was using silence to get him to spill anyway. Mm. And so yeah. Uh, it's like yeah, the thing that became that was his weapon became almost his kryptonite. Yeah, yeah. one step. Yeah, I love the world of uh, the Dark Tower series. Uh, I think we learned a lot more about it with uh, Roland's youth, but also just traveling through this mountain, traveling through this mm. this cool thing of seeing the remnants of a world before. The fact that Jake says it's like a subway, and he's like, "What is that? Mm. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore." But I, whatever, let's keep going. And yeah. they find the railroad and. They were finding this newspaper that disintegrated and yeah. an old like train car person, a couple of skeletons, oh and they like disintegrate. It and was fascinating. And they talk about gas, though, and yes. gas that oh, used to right. do that. And so you have the backstory of Roland, which feels, again, very like Arthurian mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. mer very like Legend of Merlin. Mm -hmm. And I don't know where that fits in. And then you have Jake's world and the subway, and it feels very like post-apocalyptic, yes. like a biological weapon of totally. some sort. Mm -hmm. I'm getting vibes of uh, uh, Thundar the Barbarian, which is a Hanna-Barbera cartoon from the 80s where like it took place on our world, but it was like thousands of years from now, like after an apocalypse. Mm -hmm. And in the intro, there was a Chewbacca type character who picked up a Volkswagen Beetle. And as a little kid, that freaked me out. I was like, whoa, uh, it's our world, but it's not. It's yeah. after this devastating thing. So it's a really fascinating world. Another thing I loved is uh, when Roland describes um, uh, uh, men who weren't men, a non-man, a not-man. And he's man. like, oh, invisible. What was that? Invisible. Like, if you say so. He doesn't know that word. He <laughs> yeah. goes, yeah, if you say so, whatever. Yeah. Like, he'd never heard I the word. But that as soon as Jake there. said that for us, I'm like, oh, an invisible man. Oh, that's cool. There's yeah. invisible men. Um, and the, uh, the mutants, the yes, slow mutants. the slow mutants, yeah. I pictured, I mean, there. I know there are tentacles, but it gave me sort I mean, it's sort of a, gave me like a golem or the descent. The descent, yeah. Type thing of people, people who have like evolved. Maze scorched Runner? Earth. Oh, was I haven't seen or read that something? yet. Okay. Yeah, I Scorched Earth, yeah. That's the one. I watched yeah. it on a plane once to try and put me to sleep and it worked. <laughs> um, but it's the same sort of thing where it's like, <laughs> and they kind of crawl in the darkness. Sure. Mm -hmm. Very something yeah, we've seen a lot. And I'm wondering with the timeline, what was inspired by that, mm -hmm. um, by the Gunslinger book? Because this is, I was like, you know, it's like, I've seen this like 19 times, mm -hmm. I feel like, or yeah. a borrowed version of it. Yeah. And we know what came first, chicken or the egg. Was this inspired by something previous before? Sure. Like earlier than the eight, uh, in, what, uh, late 70s, early 80s? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I can see that being inspired, especially after. the slow mutants part reminded me of H.G. Wells' Morlocks from like the mm -hmm. time machine, like oh, the underground mm, not people. Not Murlocks. <laughs> 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 are, are those, what is that? What? Oh, do you guys, Merl the chat will tell you. What, are they, <laughs> <laughs> what is that from? Murlocks. From what? World of Warcraft. <laughs> oh, got it. Okay, cool. That's good. Uh, yeah, it sounded you like you were with me. like you were doing an impression of Zoidberg from Futurama, is what oh, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or me vomiting on a Saturday night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, G a Java Saturday night, not the Saturday night. <laughs> not the Saturday night. Uh, <laughs> Java Book Geek Girl says there's something really heartbreaking at Jake knowing what's going to happen, but is too afraid to try to stay or leave and survive on his own. Mm. That's right. We were talking about that. I put myself in that situation uh, with yeah. Jake where it was like, you know, he's just seen slow mutants. He's, mm -hmm. you know, faced death twice then. Mm -hmm. um, I love that he, like, had no qualms scaling a mountain at all. Mm -hmm. Like, he was actually better than Roland at that. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, realized he can't shoot. He can't do anything like that. He really can't defend himself. And if it was, I, I can't. I realized that in a zombie apocalypse, my oh. role will be that I will sacrifice myself to save everyone else. Oh, because they can do a lot that. more than I no, can. No, don't say that. For reals though. And that's an that's important really integral sweet. part of the group. It is. You have to sometimes do this. Jake knows. Jake knows. <laughs> I just figured I would die, but not that I would do anything to help anyone. I just <laughs> figured like, oh, I'm the person happening. that like at the beginning of the movie, you see someone getting eaten in their car. Oh, oh, and you're no. like, shit. That's me. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, you guys. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. You're going to live. So this was a very real thing for me when Jake, you know, <laughs> Jake is like, I will stay here defiantly and, and I will, you know, survive on my own. And as soon as it starts becoming a reality, he's like, no, nah, sorry. Yeah, wait, so wait, sad. wait. Yeah. And yeah, I would rather I, die quickly. Yeah. Like this ish. Yeah. Then I, I try thought and that figure out and extend this life of dying. I know. Did any of you guys think for a second that when he was getting grabbed by the mutants and Roland was describing this is it, this is the moment that I was being told that Roland was going to shoot Jake in the head? No. I thought that as a way to to put him out of his misery mm. so that he didn't get eaten. Because mm. Roland killed. was describing, oh, these people are grabbing at Jake, for sure they're going to eat him. Yeah. That's what they're trying to do. 
Mercy kill. I thought that and for a second. And he's mercy killed before. Ali, boom, boom, two in the head, mm -hmm. yeah. instinctively and reflectively. I think he was. She was almost dead before he realized what he'd done. Yeah. So that would make Ali, sense if right. that was like you know occurring again. Absolutely. And then I think it's that same thing. He goes, oh, I realized too late how close their heads actually were. Yeah. But then the bullet was straight through the head of the mutant. Yeah. No, I, he's he's good at what he does. He's good at what he does. Mm. I also thought that um, uh, uh, if I were Jake, that I absolutely would have gone with the gunslinger to try and that's your only course of option to survive yeah. and the part that uh, that really struck me was that the, the whole time I'm reading this I'm thinking the only way that this works is because we are in Roland's head because Stephen King is allowing us to hear Roland's thoughts mm -hmm. and every decision he's making and why he's making it otherwise Roland is a dick he's a <laughs> dick but the fact that we're in his brain and Roland's going I thought for a second that I could take this kid away that I would uh, forego chasing down the man mm -hmm. in black and just maybe try to raise this kid and teach him to become another gunslinger. The and Oracle, then, it's and, not too know. late. Turn around. There's, yeah. there's a village over there. Then I could Absolutely. then I can go after the man in black later and it yeah. feels like... Or we could go after him together or he could do... Yeah. Like, all these different things that, that in, in, in split seconds he's picturing these different like timelines in this whole mm -hmm. life ahead of him makes it... And then there's moments where Roland says, I, I am shocked at how quickly I was able to put him aside. How quickly I was able to shift what to have that, Jake what be a that character. What was one thing that he did? He did one small thing and then yeah. it was just a shift completely. He was like, okay, you're not a person anymore. You're yes. just like, you're something oh, in yeah. that way. When, yeah. he, when he decides to go with him, he says, mm -hmm. you can stay or you can go, mm -hmm. but if you go, we're going to the man in black, and it's like, it's that immediate, you're a, you're a pawn now. Yeah. You're, yeah. Part, you're just part of this plan. And, and hearing Roland's thought process about that almost made it, like I understood why it went down the way that it went down. Um, uh, I still think he's a dick, though, for letting him maybe fall to his death, maybe. That's what happened to yeah. Jake, right? Yeah. He's like, they're climbing cliffs, they yeah. see the man in black, you know, saying, he's like, all right, oh, all right, Hello, all right. boys. Hello, boys. <laughs> and, like, knowing it's going to be Matthew McConaughey as yeah. well. I know. Yeah, I yeah, actually yeah. just so interviewed playful. him yesterday. Oh, really? Cool. Cool. And I was just like, and he was wearing black. And I was like, ha, 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 But then Reese Witherspoon was there, and I was just like, uh, yeah. you're going to be third wheeling of this whole conversation. <laughs> she have been like, so book club, uh, wrinkle in time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. My. I had that in my. <laughs> <laughs> you could have just been like, no. I just read Wrinkle in Time. I'm reading the other thing right now. Can't wait to see do your you movies. Guys, do you guys want to come on the show? Yeah. Oh, I didn't do oh, that at man. all. Okay. Instead, I was That's just like, so let's fun. talk about the movie Sing. Yeah. <laughs> you play a pig and a koala. <laughs> Actually, I did go on a bit of a rank that he's an American koala. I was like, oh, is koala he? is from? He's like, Australia. And I'm like, oh, I am good. from? And he's like, I see where you're going with this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's weird, man. Yeah. Koala sounds... Uh, Wrong. <laughs> mm. Anyway, there you go. Was the koala, did you see the movie? Yeah. Was he born in the U.S.? Did they ever go into that? Uh, yeah, and there was a kangaroo, and I was like, here we go. And, we and the kangaroo's southern. Hi. Oh, yeah. I'm <laughs> yeah. a kangaroo. Move out of okay. my way. Sorry. Like, Sorry about that. <laughs> well, I guess, I guess they, know, have, they, have, the they have airplanes in the world of Sing. They can just go to different countries, I guess. I don't know. I guess. Sorry. I should have grilled them on that. That's all right. No, that's okay. <laughs> but anyway, this is far more. This is far more important. Um, there was something here. Nino Ray said, "What's up with Roland's hypnotic powers?" And I do really want to talk about that because I don't get it. What did he do? That like coin trick where you roll a bullet over his knuckles, and somehow that was so hypnotic that it put Jake? Jake in a trance. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's right. He used right. it to get the information the first that's time right. because he couldn't quite access the memory, mm -hmm. and then he did it again to put just to get, give him a good night's sleep or something. Yeah. But do, what? What? How did? What was your interpretation of that? I feel like he has some, I, I don't know if he's maybe immortal, something def, I mean, he had an interaction with the man in black. He's having, he knows something happened with them 12 years ago. The man in black has these powers. I feel like something must have happened to change him from the one that we see in his backstory. Of because course. Yeah. he is so, obvi obviously he has all these issues, but there's this big quest that he's on. Time is softening. He's pulling the pull of the dark tower. So I feel like, it's hard for me to gauge because it is so shrouded in the mystery of what the tower is and where they are and when they are. And that they keep saying, time is softening. What does that mean? It's, know, it's right? melting. It feels like it's yeah. melting together. I think the man in black says it when he's right before, when he says, meet me, meet me over here in three mm -hmm. days time. And they keep doing three, three for everything. Mm -hmm. They traveled for three days without incident. Three mm -hmm. days oh, without incident. Oh, that was the whole chapter. That was a There's, whole chapter, yeah. whole that section. section. That was like, yeah. um, as I lay dying, um, there's a, a chapter by Faulkner, and it just says, my mother is a fish, and that's the whole chapter. <laughs> yeah, it's about grief. Again, when you say his last name, when I say his last name, it sounds very different. Faulkner? Oh, beg yours. <laughs> <laughs> Naughty. <laughs> Faulkner. Yeah, what, what do you guys think, though? 
Do you think he's got powers? Like, what's what's going he on? He has to. And, like, the king's blood, yeah. which was ancient and died out, mm -hmm. was um, a big indicator for me. And um, this rite of passage that the boys have to do for their manhood and that there's, like, the you know, it's, it's the Padawan master mm -hmm. kind of scenario all over again. Um, and acquiring the weapons. But at the same time, there's got to be something else like supernatural yes absolutely in yep. this world yeah there, ha there, there has to be magic there has to be some supernatural element it may have something to do with the the time aspect of it uh, um i love that that time is kind of frozen uh but still s like moving i love the way that they describe time mm -hmm. and how everything's super vague and and when they're in the cave roland describes it that uh, him and jake are, uh, discovered they were thirsty for light as you would mm. be for food or water, yeah. and I, and how like that was messing up their own internal clocks because they're like we would fall asleep and then I guess wake up and keep walking and then fall asleep and we didn't know yeah. you know what was what. So I think that there's a supernatural element to the world. When I first started reading it, I thought maybe this is all post-apocalyptic and maybe the very you know Arthurian Game of Thrones royal family thing still happens in a future that is thousands of years from now or whatever mm -hmm. on Earth, and they mm -hmm. don't know that it's Earth and they find remnants and stuff. But now I'm thinking it's it's a different multiverse. dimension. It's yeah. multiversal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, uh, and a lot of different things coming together. And just with my theories about what the Dark Tower is going to be and how little hints that they're dropping in this, I feel like it, we talked about it before that I'm, I re I'm remembering uh, Will Ferrell's Land of the Lost movie, mm -hmm. which is like a convergence of different things. Yeah. But I think that Roland has some magic in him. I, when, whenever we read those sections, whenever I read those sections, uh, that's something that didn't really stay with me. The other aspects of Roland's character stay with me. I'm still not sure if he's villain or hero. Like I said, when we first read the first chapter, but at learning more about his backstory, I'm like, okay, he's the hero. The arrogance of the man in black, though, made yes. me think that he was the villain. That the, 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 the man in black's the villain? Yeah, just yes. with that arrogance, that sure. confidence. And when you're overconfident, it's not usually because, you know, you're set on saving someone. It's because it's you're true. set on destroying someone. And right mm -hmm. now, the man in black is not the underdog. It's Roland, obviously. So yeah. the underdog is the guy that you're going to root for over, you know. I will yeah. talk about what the supernatural thing that I was trying to search for before, which didn't make sense. It's like mm -hmm. the guns were normal. The guns were his father's that were shaved down to yes. feel better in his hands. Where do all the bullets come from? Where do the bullets <laughs> keep coming from? And he's saying it when he's mowing down the, the people Maybe of Tull. Yeah. And he's saying it seamlessly. And it sounds like this trick or a supernatural thing that he's been taught that yeah. comes with being a gunslinger where he's peeling off all these bullets and then somehow like he's like reloading. loading them as yes. oh, still cool. shooting. Yeah. So Gambit I'm thinking there's going to be a, yeah, there's going to be some sort of sequence in this movie where you just see this beautiful, like I have a feeling it's going to be really intricate with the fingers, but he's going to be able to load these bullets as it's shooting it, it like because mm -hmm. When he, and he just to go off of that, 57 people, but just, there's yeah. usually six rounds in a gun. Absolutely. Eight? I don't know. I've never held one. Yeah. You've never held a gun? Mm. I, I had to recently. I, I, I've been to a, a shooting range. I think every like human it. should hold one and like and and fire. Ah, I've committed genocide. Like oh. so, that's something a little bit in video games. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. It's a little bit different. Guns are horrifying. Like They're I've terrifying. Oh no, yeah. They're terrifying. I, I respect and understand that power. I don't want to have anything to do with them, but I've gone to a shooting range. And a thing that's really interesting is when they get to the um, underground like subway station and they find uh, little kiosks that are selling stuff and Roland gets excited because there's guns. He says that somebody filled them with lead. He, somebody says like, he, like that they ruined the guns. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. now that you just said what you just said, Maude, yeah. I'm like, Does he, was he just describing a bullet that what we think is a bullet? Yeah, and is, is it, it something else? He maybe opens happening? it and was like, well, this gun's useless. I'm like, and now I'm like, well, what, what are your guns? Yeah, you don't have- these bullets? Magic, magic bullets. We never really magic hear bullets. about like- That's cool. Oh, no, they, he talks about casings, doesn't he? Like the casings, the maybe, shells, the maybe, shells yeah. are falling But empty. now I'm like, now it's just a cool energy that pops off. Like he's like, yeah, I don't know, something different. Okay, let me, let me uh, I want to say something else too. I'll go ahead and confess something. Yeah. I have a buddy who is a big fan of all these. We are having a conversation. He turns to me and he goes, do you want to know what happens at the end of the last book? No. And I, so, and I told him, yeah, tell me. And I asked him to tell me. I, I asked for it myself. It's my own fault. Masochistic. And he told me what happens in the last section in the last chapter. Well, you're not saying it now, are I'm you? not going to. No, 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 I'm not going to. But <laughs> you're going to no, throw an iPad know. at me. <laughs> but oh. it, uh, it made like reading story. this section very interesting. And it made me want to go back and reread. And it made oh. me, which just to me means that like, yeah. that this series is super like rereadable. And I think ah, that that's, cool. I, I think that, that, uh, that Stephen King, and, and maybe it's because we're reading the revised version that he revised right after he finished the last book. Which he meant to be mm -hmm. right, took, took another look at this and kind of, you know, mm. tweaked it a little bit or did whatever he wanted to do. 
Um, I don't know if I'm interested in ever reading the original 1982, like his first version. I don't think so. But re reading this and knowing what what my friend told me, I'm like, I might want to read the whole thing and then reread this again. Wow. Because mm -hmm. okay. I feel like there's a bunch of stuff that, of course, you miss. And well, the more we're going to get into the story. People are obsessed with this series. Jessica Choba oh. is. Ben Meckler, who's our um Meckler's into it, too? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Super into it. I cool. know. I know. What yeah. the heckla, Meckla? Yeah. What the heckla, and they And they read it over and over again, and you have fandoms of people who, much like sure. some of the TV shows and movies that we read, this is one of those original, like, extreme fandoms, like, series Absolutely. that you can find Easter eggs in, and you can go back and see mm -hmm. references to other things. Is there a name really for the great. fandom? Like like uh, oh, Firefly yes. has brown coats. Is there a name? What are they, what are they called? Slingers. Um, slingers. Slingers. Is that the name of the fandom for? No, I'm making it up. For Dark Tower fans. Maybe it is. Zoidberg says yes, Hector. <laughs> Why would you do that, Hector? Mm -hmm. uh, Nino Ray. Well, again, I asked for it, and I'm because I was also describing to him my experience reading the book. It's something that I'm not all the way sold on yet, but I'm like it's mm -hmm. it's so interesting and so well written yeah. that I like I said before I want to wait for this movie to come out. And if the movie does what I want it to do, I'm going to go back and go, I'm going to give the, I'm going to reread this and I'll read the whole series mm -hmm. and then watch the movie again. And then my buddy was telling me they're planning on, apparently the rumors are uh, a movie, a TV mm -hmm. show, movie, TV show, movie. Mm -hmm. So like a trilogy of films, but TV shows, seasons that fill mm -hmm. in in between mm -hmm. and that apparently they're trying to get Matthew McConaughey to be in the show, but they've got Idris Elba like signed. Mm -hmm. wow. And I was thinking, I'm like, yeah, they've both done television. Mm -hmm. Television's new now, where where that's totally yeah, yeah, not it's not a cheap. It's thing not to exactly, do. Yeah. You, and that's so interesting to me. That just made me more excited about the whole thing. So. One yeah. th little thing about Stephen King's writing, though, that I'm not. It's not that I'm not appreciating it yet, but it's not doing me any favors reading it. Is when he'll add characters mm -hmm. without any explanation. And be so, like, we'll get to them later. Exactly. Yeah, like name drops exactly. a thing. Like and I'm like, yeah. who's Susan that? Yeah, Susan. Keeps yes. bringing up. But yes. it's like, no, no, this was all about Allie, and we just heard all about Allie, but then Susan, she's so important, but you're not telling me why she's important. Mm -hmm. So right. why do I retain this, and why is this, you know, important? And I, and I felt like it happened again with his friends. Like, he had Bert and Cuthbert, mm -hmm. and that was like his best friend, and then all of a sudden, all these other names kept popping up. And I'm like, hold on, who's important? What's got, like, why don't you introduce them all, or select the ones that you like, but then... Because I'm invested in, in the friend and I'm invested in, in Ali and then all of a sudden they come secondary to a person who we actually don't get to know at all. Mm -hmm. I, was yeah. like, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. I think I f it feels similar to A Wrinkle in Time where we got to the end and we're like, you clear, we're clearly just waiting for the next book. And right. I do feel like a lot of mm. backstory because we don't have that much left in this book. There's one chapter, but it's much shorter it's like than the other pages, ones. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'm sort of, I feel like You're they're- prepping for not being satisfied at the end of this book. Yes. Yeah. I have I'm definitely That's okay. <laughs> absorbed, like the feedback I've been getting from a lot of people who have read this and super excited about it and love it and they've read the entire sure. series is that the first one is not the best. The first one oh. is nowhere near the best. It's Jessica Chobot's favorite one, apparently. I know, which is bizarre too. I asked her we which is her favorite and she goes, the first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, do we want to talk to her about it next week. So interesting. But, um, I, so have you guys uh, ever seen Fringe? The TV no, show. I want to. But I I'm a big I'd fan like of Lost. Oh, you man. know this. But no, Fringe is good. Okay, so Fringe is really good. <laughs> it starts out as um, a little monster of the week, but it deals with. I love that! Yeah, it's and it does that throughout the show better, but it deals with um, alternate universes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and the sliders. Keep and, going. Yeah, and it's that same kind of idea of if you do something wrong, mm -hmm. They either start melting to they start melting together. A hole opens up in one. You you end up. So I feel like that's something that's happening here, where mm. these times are getting pulled together, mm. maybe because of something that the Man in Black did, or because of the Dark Tower, that they're folding into each other, and that's why people are losing their memory and they don't know what. But is they know who Christ is. Like they were talking about the mm -hmm. Bible, and yeah. it seemed like that that was a common denominator between all the worlds, and that's what they could bond over. But not the word invisible. But exactly. Yeah. And that's something so we've never heard of. Or yeah. yeah. Is there like a Dark Tower encyclopedia that anybody came out with after I'm sure. it was all said and done? Hopefully, because I'm highlighting words when I'm reading this. Yeah. Going, is this because I don't know? Yeah. Is this because is this, this a, isn't is this actually a word? word? Or is yeah. it a fictional word? Yeah, me what too. The hell is, <laughs> like, what plant is Timothy? Yes. <laughs> Point to me a plant yeah. called Timothy. A Timothy plant. Right. Yeah. That's a, thank that's you. A <laughs> oh, thank God. Yeah. There it is. We brought that in on the set just for you, Ma. That's a Timothy plant. Hi, Timothy. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that I noticed was they describe, it, uh, he describes in his flashbacks this like long winter, and they say that it's come to full winter's Earth, coming. and things are. Is starting. that the name of the world? Is it full Earth? I thought or? that they were. They, it made it kind of sound to me like winter is coming. Sure. Huh. 
and that something was ending and so maybe I just feel like there's got to be hopping to other, you know, like some, this world is ending and something opens up mm -hmm. and he goes, something in the desert, they describe oh. the deserts that you go beyond. Uh -huh. I don't know if it's a, like the Dark Tower is like the wardrobe or something like yeah. that or if they're, the man in black is slicing his way. Have you guys read, ugh, I'm referencing a lot of things, but his dark mm -hmm. materials? No, yes. not yet. Yes. The subtle the knife. knife. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So. Cool. We should. That's a great read. series. No, <laughs> it's so good. I've been read it for about seven, six or seven years, so I'm due again. Uh, yeah, I read cool. it. I read all, the three of them at the beginning of this year, and it was they're great books. They're so so satisfying. satisfying. And when that movie came out, this is proof that a great book with a good cast doesn't mean it's going to be a good movie at all. Mm. But they're turning it into a TV show. With they're not going to have Daniel Craig and Nicole Kidman. No, no, just no. separate. Oh, yeah, like Golden BBC, Compass, right. I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a real bummer for fans Krampus. of the books. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, I'd so see that. Yeah. Golden yeah. Krampus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wh what else? Uh, was the uh, yep. <laughs> Religion seems to be important. Like, what is the car? I don't know. Nina. Oh, Ray I do. Yes. Cool. So, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> car in Dungeons and Dragons. Ah, Ooh, thank you. Okay. Is what the monk class yes. has. Yeah. So when they it's like their level chi. Up, it is exactly oh. that, and they're able to access their cart, which will give them some sort of extra move, or it will give them like you know a little bit more of something. That's interesting. But that's the parallel that I kind of had with that when you mm -hmm. mentioned cart. I was like, surely it's not the same. Mm -hmm. um, but the way that he used it, it was kind of a seamless explanation. So I, I, I pictured those two kind of meaning the same. And in the world of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, Ki is what they describe. K-I, I think, is right. the same thing. It's like that sort of inner energy yep. that they can like focus and, and then shoot it to the ground and make themselves fly. It's it's pretty cool. Is it based Got on it. Egyptian the, like the force Could mythology be. too? Because isn't there Ka and Ba is when you, uh, when they probably. put the body, like when they mummify the oh, bodies right. and put them in the sarcophagus? Oh. Well, I know that Ra is the god of sun. Right. right. Yeah. I'm playing him in Smite and I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. Mm -hmm. That sounds really fun. Mm. Oh, it's great. You play this the gods. This is a great question. Java Book Geek Girl says, I'm also curious as to the significance of man Jesus. Like yes. even the familiar religious references aren't how we know them. Mm -hmm. I love that every time the, the word and the name Jesus comes up, it's man Jesus. Yeah. The word man is in front of it. I'm like, what does that mean? What, what is Jesus in this world and how is it, uh, this character, this person? Well, I mean, it's like man Jesus instead of like God Jesus. I guess. I yeah, man, oh yeah, man, like on one earth, actually Jesus walked, versus yeah. Jesus man Jesus as opposed to. Walked. As opposed to the Kanye West song. Oh, I hope that song makes a reference, uh, makes an appearance too. That'd be great. Well, it was good Kanye. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> um, this just in, Kanye and Kim are getting a divorce. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it on the end. We have not run out of things to talk about the gunslinger almost. Can <laughs> we talk about the, the end of the fourth chapter and how yes. heart-wrenching it was? Heck, did you cry? Oh, I, I, it affected me emotionally for the rest of the day. Oh. I read it earlier today and I kept talking about it. And Should my girlfriend was like, I haven't, I haven't read the book right. in forever. I can't, I can't talk about it with you. But um, it, was, uh, it was heartbreaking. And it reminded me of Gandalf falling uh, yes. from the cliff. And it but was he turned into Gandalf the girl, uh, right. white. So Jake after. the White's going to come back. Yes. I do. I got a feeling Jake just falls and fights fell. the Balrog, like, all the way down there. <laughs> He's died before. Yeah. That's the thing. Does How Jake do even, can he die? We didn't see the body. So Jake is, is going to make another appearance in the Dark Tower series. Do you, read it? Do you remember when Jake first got run over by a car yep. and he said, I don't want to remember that again because I could taste the shit coming out of my mouth. I know, he pooped his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> when you die, you poop your mouth. You don't know this, but when oh you die, you God. poop your own mouth. Yeah. You go, oh. <laughs> Just like in South Park. Like in South Park. Yeah. Sorry, Mud. That's what happens when you die. <laughs> but if you can recall it so clearly, and yeah. he like was, you know, had crystal clear memory. Of so he's died he died and come dying. back, and died and come back. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. It's a possibility. And I he just was in the 70s. I'm like trying to track time as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, they reference that it's in the 70s in New York, mm -hmm. um, and we don't really know what era we're in right now. But if maybe he's cap catapulted to another line, and this is the bloody carrot that the man in black is just dangling. I don't Maybe know. Ran, especially if they're chasing each other throughout the books, and he is this touchstone for him of this important character. Who's to say that the Man in Black's not going to bring him back into sure. another world just when he's maybe about to get the best of him? Oh, zombie Ooh. Jake. That would be good. Oh, oh puppet. Be so sad. Ma, yeah. So sad. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Ooh. All right. <laughs> get your tissues out, everyone. <clears throat> <clears throat> the gunslinger's legs carried him in a sudden leap, breaking the paralysis that held him. 
He took a true giant step above the dangling boy and landed in a skidding, plunging rush towards the light that offered the tower frozen on his mind's eye in a black still life into sudden silence. The silhouette was gone. Even the beat of his heart was gone as the trestle settled further, beginning its final slow dance to the depths, tearing loose, his hand finding the rocky, lighted lip of damnation. And behind him, in the dreadful silence, <sighs> the boy said, hmm, uh, uh, I can feel it. <laughs> the tears are brickling up. The boy spoke from too far beneath him. Go then, there are other worlds than these. Then the trestle tore away, the whole weight of it. And as the gunslinger pulled himself up, and through to the light and the breeze and the reality of a new car. Was he leveled up? Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> uh, yep. He twisted his head back for a moment in his agony, striving to be Janice, but there was nothing, only plummeting silence. <laughs> for the boy made no cry as he fell. Tough Jake. He didn't die. He's accepting. Right? It's acceptance. That's not dead. No, no. And uh, Zoidberg says, go then, there are world, other worlds than these. Mm -hmm. Thoughts on that line? I mean, I think that this is not the end. No and way. That's insight into something far deeper. Yeah. There he, are other worlds. And he's remembering so much, and he, if he is an empath, the fact that he's so young means that he's only, if he comes back, can only develop those sort of powers. It does mm -hmm. feel like there's some wizardry going on with the mm. mention of Ka and, and the mysticism happening. And even, it reminds me of, I'm on a roll. The Dresden Files a little bit, which is mm. like pulp detective fiction with yeah. a wizard, yeah, with where magic, I get yeah. that vibe from him I with the guns that too. too. That you, the old oh, man. It's on my the, list. It's on my. They're so list. good. I've read like eight of them. Um, with uh, carrying on from Zoidberg 11's "Go Then," there are other um, there are other worlds than these. Do you know what that is? That is this isn't goodbye. This is see you again. Mm -hmm. See you again. Yeah. That's now okay. Java Book Geeker makes a great observation. I think the boy thinks that this is how the afterlife works. You die oh, and you go to a different world. That's a so he died version. in New York and yep. then came to this world of the Dark Tower. Yep, where he was so maybe saved he's, by Roland. Where he was saved. So he's like, okay, if I die again, I'll go. Maybe he's not. Maybe he is actually just, maybe he just died. No. Nah. And maybe he didn't make a noise because Nino Ray 23 says it creeped me out that he didn't make a sound. Maybe he didn't make a sound because he does think that he's just going to go to another reality when in actuality he's just like a tough kid who just falls he's, silently. He's and always then seemed wise beyond his years yeah. and the you know when they were first trekking through the desert and he wasn't complaining and he wasn't mm -hmm. you know if he was struggling God, he was I love hiding Jake. it. Yeah. Oh, I love him so much. He was hiding it and this respect yes. that Roland was having for really him. Really hit me hard. You know. Yeah. We remember the chapter before that where the gunslinger was doing the same thing. He was trekking through the desert and he didn't want to fall and then boom, all of a sudden his hands mm -hmm. are bleeding. Mm -hmm. And it's like Jake's going through this exact same thing but so much faster than what the gunslinger was able to do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Respect. Yeah. Absolutely. Jake's the true MVP. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, it is about that time. Your assignment for next week is just to finish the book. We have okay, one more it. section. And choose your favorite passage. Yes, okay. please. And we are going to discuss the book as a whole, <laughs> what we think the movie. Let's look up the casting and stuff. We I might will. have some uh, guests <laughs> come in who could talk to us about the whole book overall, maybe. We'll see. Without spoiling. Like, again, I, 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 I know I, I'm, I'm asked worried my, about it. I did ask it. my friend just for the one thing that he told me. And it, it, for really, it really did like put everything in a new light, which is really exciting. Oh. It made me excited about the film as well, because he told me, he's like, well, you know what they're going to do with the movie. It's the movie and the show. Oh. Um, uh, uh, Nino Ray 23 says, uh, uh, Jake comes back with Charles Wallace. Oh. <laughs> that's the crossover no, book. Oh, that's really um, cute. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, I'm amazed, honestly, that I don't know the full ending, because I edit posts about it. But they're mostly <laughs> like excited about and like talk sure. about the premise, but don't go into detail. But yeah. Yeah. And so after this, we're looking for our next book. What if we put the second one? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be mad. On our list. I wouldn't be mad either. You guys get to come up with the the books you get to vote so we each week we or each month we pick three different books and we mm -hmm. have you guys vote on it and whatever you vote we, we read. read so make sure that you're <laughs> tweeting at us wait can we do that again mm -hmm. whatever, whatever you vote we, we read, read. <laughs> get your wrinkle on <laughs> <laughs> time to get our wrinkle on y'all <laughs> uh. um so make sure that outside of alpha you can always find us on twitter mm -hmm. we're all three of us are on Twitter mm -hmm. quite a bit. You can tweet at Nerdist, at Geek and Sundry, at Join Team Alpha with the hashtag Alpha Book Club with your recommendations because we gather them all. We have a big list mm -hmm. and we're going to vote on them next time. Yeah. So excited. So thank you guys yeah, so much. Thanks so much. I'm Hector Navarro. I'm Maud Garrett. I'd like to leave you with one set. This is one sentence. Please. 
This is one scene. <laughs> Stephen. This is Stephen King's writing. It's Stephen. So great. He trailed off, unable to describe the change inherent in that featureless noun, the death of romance and the lingering of its sterile carnal ren uh, revenant. A world living on the forced respiration of glitter and ceremony. The geometric steps of make-believe courtship. This is why it took me so long to read this bloody book. Um, of courtship during the sewing night, Cotill, and that had um, that had replaced with true, a madder scribble scrabble of love, which he could only um, intuit dimly. Hollow grandeur in place in place of true passions, which might once have built kingdom kingdoms and sustained them. That is one sentence. <laughs> I know this is a this is a lofty. That's not even like book. a metaphor or a simile. That's just. They're words. It's content. Lots of words. Hashtag content. <laughs> yeah. I absolutely it's believe Jake is just a tough kid facing death. Ken has burritos. Tr truly, I've made my peace with it. I'm never going to see Jake again. That's okay. No. That's okay. I'll we'll see him again. Mm. I have faith. Yep. Gotta have faith. Mm. See you next week on Alpha Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>